Howdy. Morning, Constable. I'm going strictly by the book over this morning, Sarge. This morning and every morning from now on. Is the boss in? Yeah, office. You should let your colleagues take care of you, Gallagher. I tried to tell her that, boss. She's got to handle everything on her own, hasn't she? All we want to do is look after you and the baby, Tess. You never know what's coming. You can't stop it. Yeah, yes, I'm coming. Who is it? It's Jonesy. Another one. Do you have any idea what the time is? Go and get dressed. Why? It's the middle of the night. I'm asleep. I'm dreaming. No, you're not dreaming. Just go and get dressed. We've got some trouble down in the shops. I saw this guy up the lane here at the back gate of the jewellery shop. Well, where is he now? Is he inside, do you reckon? No, he took off. Chased him for a bit, but he must have climbed the fence and down a bloody rabbit hole. You sure you weren't dreaming? Dreaming? No. What, what are you doing out here in the middle of the night, anyway? I couldn't sleep. You? I just went for a walk around the block. Look, he cut the chain before I sussed him. He left it hanging. Oh, this padlock was gone. It was a full moon last night. So? So, don't worry if your imagination went a bit over the top. They say that happens when there's a full moon. No, what they say is that more crimes are committed on the night of a full moon, and I didn't imagine anything. It happened. Somebody cut the chain, but that chain wasn't cut. There was absolutely no sign of a break-in. Spare me, Constable. You were dreaming. No, you were dreaming, remember? Anyway, what were you dreaming about? I can't remember. Hmm. We should probably let the owner know. On a Sunday morning, we won't be popular. OK, if you want to ignore an attempted burg. OK. We're working Sunday morning. Let's get Harold Craig out of bed. If anyone so much as tried to break in, the alarm would go off. Yeah, well, it looks like we might be wasting Mr Craig's valuable time. Yes, well, security's pretty tight in here. Look, I don't really think it was worth disturbing my Sunday morning for. Mr Craig, last night the chain in your bag gate was cut. Will you at least just take a look at your safe for me? Yeah, seeing as we have got you down here. Oh. Mike. I really never would have believed it possible. Is there something missing? Some of my very, very best work. Some, some special handmade designs. Unique. $20,000 worth at least. Gone. You sure? You're right, Constable. There was a burglary last night. You say he's burg, grabs the opportunity in both his slimy little hands, makes a false report, claims on the insurance. Yeah, nice theory. But who cut the chain? Nobody. It was a full moon last night. You, you dreamt the whole... for nothing, dead bag. Hey, Please get back the here! Price, boy, oh. Pay the price? What are you selling? Get off me! What are you selling? Nothing! Haven't seen you around town before, Mr Zapolsky. You haven't been that lucky till now, Sarge. I'm over from St Davies looking for work. And what sort of work would that be? I'm a jack of all trades. Yeah, we know about that. Just checked your priors. Me? Priors? Trafficking, drug of dependence, unlawful possession, theft. That was when I was a kid, down in a big city, young and stupid. Any job offers in Mount Thomas yet? Not yet, but I reckon something will turn up, eh? Let me give you a bit of advice. We're going to be watching you from now on, so think about whether it's worth sticking around. Hey, did you see any dealing? Did you find any gear? Where were you last night around midnight? In bed, dreaming. There was this hot lady sergeant in uniform, stripping off and giving me an eyeful. Yeah, in your dreams is right. You went around the back of the shops? Looking for work? No way. So who was that guy you were chasing? Don't know. 
Never seen him before. He just came up begging a few bucks, so I told him, you get nothing for nothing around here, right? I've had Harold Craig on the blower a couple of times wondering when somebody is going to get down to his shop and dust off the fingerprints. Well, he called you at home. Yes, Jones, at home on Sunday on my day off. It seems like he's fair dinkum about the bird then. And why wouldn't he be fair dinkum? I will lay odds, boss, that he's trying to pull a scam on his insurance company. The whole setup is sus, and he's a shifty yeah, ass. Be that as. That's a matter of opinion. Exactly. Be, be that as it may, whatever we think of Harold, I want this handled properly, precisely because there is an insurance claim involved. Yeah, I know that, boss, which is why I've handed it on to St David CI, rather than bring BJ in. Uh, Mount Thomas Police, Senior Sergeant Cro Yes, Mrs Ambley. Oh, yes, that's dreadful on a Sunday, isn't it? Yes, yes, we're on our way. Yes, thank you, Mrs Ambley. Bye-bye. On your way to Harold's, just drop in at Benny Danders. It's just around the corner. His alarm is disturbing the neighbours. Thought the alarm system was supposed to turn itself off. Yeah, Benny probably installed it himself. I'll check in the office. I'll try at home again. Oh, yeah, you can try him, but he should be here from 72747. Yeah, they went for cash. Cleaned out his cash box. No, no answer. What a weird and wonderful character our Benny Danders is. Yeah. Sells us his dreams and memories. Or his nightmares. Maybe that's who he's with. Now, does this look like the sort of place a girl Harold Craig described it living? On the wages he probably pays her. Maybe, yeah. Who? Hey. Simone Clark. Is she home? Um, thanks for coming. Hey, I know you. You were in the lane at the back of the shops earlier today. Yeah, could be. What's your name? Lee. Lee Harris. Jones? So where did you go this morning after we saw you leave? Here. So you live here? Yeah, yeah, I live here. But it's not my place, you know. Yeah, it's Simone's. Where is she? In the loo. Simone! The cops are here! <laughs> She's OK. <laughs> She's good. Yeah, well, by the look of you, mate, there might be a problem. Simone! So take a look. Hey, you can't do that. Oh, my God. Simone, do you think Harold would keep you on if he knew you were on smack? Maybe. He likes me. How old are you, Simone? Twenty. I look young for my age. How long have you been using? A couple of months. Since I met Lee. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't use a needle. I snort it. Where do you get it? I don't know. Lee gets it. Simone, do you ever open the shop for Mr Craig? Yes. He trusts me. So you have a front door key and you know the alarm code? Yeah. So? How well do you know your boyfriend, Lee? Um, he's, he's cool. He's a junkie, Simone. He's a seriously lost cause. Have you been helping him get drugs? What? Last night, Mr. Craig's shop was broken into. It was robbed. And it was done by someone who knew a lot about the jewellery shop. You think I robbed Harold? Well, you've got a door key. You know, the alarm code. Do you also give you the combination for the safe? No. But he likes you. He trusts you. But no way I did that. What do you know about this? That's Simone's. Did it come from Benny Dander's second-hand shop? Who? Hey. Come on, Lee. We know you've got convictions for burglary in the city. Uh, did you or Simone break into a shop, any shop, last night or this morning? No. All right, so how did you score? Girlfriend of Simone's. She owed us. See, that's weird, because Simone told us that she got it from you. 
I don't know why she'd say that. I reckon this story about a girlfriend owing you is rubbish. You were wasted when we saw you this afternoon, but you couldn't score from Mikey, your dealer, this morning, could you? You got the money from somewhere. What do you know about Mikey? I know that he's got prior convictions for dealing heroin, that he's down from the city via St David's. What can you tell us? Nothing. You're scared of him, mate. If you got a problem, tell us and maybe we can help. No. We're not dealing. All we've done is use. Did you even find any stash? What have you got on us? <laughs> Nothing. John, sorry to meet again under these circumstances. John? Oh, where is he? We've nearly finished with him. Has he been charged? No, but there are certain matters we'll be continuing to look into. What about his girlfriend? Where's she? She's been released for now. <sighs> I'd like to kick her ass all the way back to where she came from. <sighs> Righto, son, let's go. You don't have to come in. I'm not here to debate, son. The youth's outside. Let's go. So? Now, look. You came back here because you couldn't handle what you're into. Now, don't start with me or I'll finish it. Come on. I just don't know, do you, Dad? Thanks, Tom. That explains a lot. It's not always the parents' fault, Charles. So how do you know him? Well, John Harris used to be a detective sergeant at St David's. When Lee was under his influence, he was a well-behaved kid, very academic, top of his class, in fact. What went wrong? Oh, well, the parents divorced. Lee moved down to the city with his mother. Got with the wrong crowd, I suppose. Fair enough. So how are we going with this alleged burg at Harold Craig's? Right. Well, Simone admits that she had the alarm code and she'd opened the shop for Harold more than once. Except no one but Harold knew the combination to the safe. And the guy that I disturbed last night at the back of the jewellery shop was young and skinny. But you can't identify him as Lee Harris. No, but I saw what I saw, boss. Oh, come on, he steals $20,000 worth of jewellery, but he can't score drugs when we see him this morning. Yeah, they needed cash. They did have a Benny's then scored. Officers. Meet again, Mr. Craig. <laughs> um, excuse me, I'll just. Would you mind if we had a look at this jewellery, please? Oh, it was, uh, no, it's just some uh, orders and you know alterations and things. So it's, Open uh, the safe, please. Um, I was, I was just about to phone you myself. Yeah, sure you were. No, believe me, I haven't a clue who's behind this. It was a male voice, obviously disguised. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell you whether it was young or old, calling from a public phone box, and here we are. The missing jewellery. Back in the safe. So it is. Mr Craig, I'd like a fuller explanation of how the jewellery you claimed was stolen found its way back into your safe. Claimed? Well, I, for one, would like to be more convinced that there actually was a burglary at your premises in the first place. <gasps> Am I being accused of something? $20,000 worth of jewellery, gone. Suddenly it turns up in your safe. Who put it there? I did. You. Well, I, I got a tip off. You know, the, the man who phoned me? He told me he'd put a black plastic bag underneath my car. And I found the bag just exactly where he said he put it. And the jewellery was inside it. So naturally, I put it back in the safe. And naturally, you neglected to tell us. <laughs> no, I, was, I didn't know what you're getting at. I was, I was just relieved that the jewellery had been returned to me. Try this. Ex-Detective Sergeant Harris sussed out that his druggy son did over the jewellery shop with his girlfriend. Came on strong. The kid returned the stuff. If someone did over the jewellery shop at all. Do you seriously think that I dreamt the cut chain and chasing the kid up the street? OK, persistence should be rewarded. Ask him to come in. Well, if you think my son has the nows to pull off a jewellery robbery, you're out of your minds. He was a pretty bright kid, according to the boss. He was. Till he went off with his mother. Started smoking weed, popping pills, snorting, rotting his brain. Addicts still maintain the ability to pay for a deal. 
Look, it's Simone you should be after. She pulls all the strings. If he's done anything, it's because of her. So you're saying Simone Clark planned the burg and your son just carried it out? I'm saying I don't have a son anymore. Not while she's around. If you thought that your son was in the possession of stolen property, would you think about returning it? To protect him? Protect him? Who is he? Where is he? He's not that brain-dead loser I dragged out of here today. I think we've heard enough, Mr Harris. You reckon he's worth wasting your time on, do you? Well, I'll give him six months. What do you think? We're just trying to do our job, Mr Harris. Should we leave it at that? Well, good luck to you, Sergeant. How's that kid ever going to come good if his own father's given up on him? Do you reckon he has? He's covering for what his son did last night so he doesn't have to deal with it. You pubbing it? Ah, uh, no, no, you go, you go. I'll just, uh, I'll go another couple of hours. You look tired. It's like getting dragged out in the middle of the night, Dusty. you? Howdy. Oh, heaven. Someone's at the door. I think they're delivering your baby. Aren't you delivering it? No, a friend of yours is. Where's your white coat? What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd better check up on you. Just as well I did. Mount Thomas Police Station, Constable Jones speaking. You had like a light. Oh, oh yes, Mrs. Ambley. What sort of light? This is Penny's place. Not an earthly light. Could you say that bit again? Triangular shaped and it looked like it had eyes. Okay, Mrs. Am okay, Mrs. Ambley. Yes, we'll take a look at it. Thank you for the call. Count the five backwards. What? Just do it. Five, four, three, two, one. You awake? Mm-hmm. Wide awake? Yep. Left the door unlocked. His homemade alarm system must have blown the fuses. It won't work. Mother ship must have knocked out everything electrical. Stop mucking around. Oh, shh. Giants. Oh, my God. Benny, you're an idiot. Everyone who signed on for the convention got one as a free gift. And that's where you've been all weekend. A sci-fi convention. Sci-fi? No. It's a bit more serious than that. Serious? Come on, Benny. You're wearing a luminous mask. Look, if I tell the truth, I don't want this spread around town, right? All right. Well, we were meeting to share our experiences, offer mutual support. After all, we're the ones who've been taken. What do you reckon? They come back down here and done over your shop. Non-believers. <laughs> Say no more. Have you ever read a book called Alien Abductions? Yes, I've got a copy right here. Seems to have gone missing. Yeah, we found one in the possession of a young woman. Two arms, two legs, a head. Well, there are a lot of copies been made of that book. I mean, she could have obtained any one of them. I'll know when I've done a thorough check. You'll know what? Well, whether thieves broke in or whether they did this to learn more about us. Are there any items missing? Any artefacts? Any historical objects? Items for serious study? Culturally significant indicators? Or is it just a case of the usual pilfering? They went for your cash box. Oh, well, that does suggest two arms, two legs and a head. Or, to put it another way, a typical denizen of this benighted planet. Just do an inventory as soon as possible, Benny. I'll be up all night, don't worry. There is another world out there, somewhere. You tell me where, Benny, and I'll buy a one-way ticket. You can't stop it. One-way ticket. One-way one ticket. ticket. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. I'm coming. I'm coming, all right? 
Evan, honestly, if uh, Boss was just wondering if you know what time you start your shift this morning. Oh, thank you, Senior. Sorry, sorry. Uh, was it a nice dream? Uh, shut up, Ben. Benny brought that list of stolen items in for us. Is this all? Yeah, that and about $100 of cash. Portable wireless, circa 1950, set of English coins. Half crown, florin, shilling, sixpence, the thruppenny bit, penny, halfpenny, and the farthing. Worth? Practically nothing. And the alien abduction book. Yeah, they probably took that too. I can't find it anywhere. Right. And that's a lot. Yes. You sure about that? Why? You recovered any property? No, Benny, I'm just asking. No items of cultural significance for we know who to study? Look, there's a lot of stock there. I can't check it all. Well, your stock inside out, Benny. My dad bought stuff going back to before I was a nipper, Detective Hashem. Some of it hasn't seen the light of day for 50 years. Ugh, God knows what's pickled in bottles, mutating over the years. Life, but not as we know it. I trusted you. Possible shots fired. Call out, wouldn't give his name. Where? Sloane Clark's address. Stay back, please. Stay right back. Right back. Please! Simone. Clear. Now that's it. Just keep breathing. Don't worry. Just breathe deeply. Clear. Command Thomas 258 to BKC. We require an ambulance at our last urgent. Shot. At the flat she shares with your son in Sugden Road. Is he here? No. So, how is she? She's being operated on at the moment. The doctors believe that she'll recover. Mr Harris, do you know where your son is? Said he was catching the early morning train to the city. What time is that? Seven. Said he was going back to his mother's place to get clean. Funny about that, because that's where he got dirty. Did you actually see him get on the train? Oh, you think my son did it? Well, that'd be smart, wouldn't it? Doing time for her. Mr. Harris will need your wife's address and phone number so he can check on your son. Well, it won't do you much good. He'll have scored by now. He won't know or care who he is. Do you care? Hey, Constable, that address, please, Mr. Harris. She lives in Paran. I'll go and get you the number. Thank you. The guy owns the security fencing business. So? Well, Lee wouldn't have to go too far to get a new security chain, would he? If we manage to find Lee, you can bring that up. Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 258. Simone? Hey, do you remember me? Tess Gallagher? Lee. Where's Lee? Right, that's something we don't know. We're hoping you might be able to tell us. Do you... Simone? Simone, listen, we need to know who did this to you. Mikey came. Well, Mike, Mikey Zapolsky. He came to your flat, did he? Simone? Oh. Simone, listen. Was it Mikey Zapolsky who shot you? Where? Where's Lee? Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll find Where's him. We'll find him. We'll find Lee. Evan? Mm. Some black powder marks on her hand. I think maybe she might have tried to hold up her hand to stop the shooting. It's all right. It's all right. We'll come back later. We'll come back later. Seems more scared for Lee than for herself. So what have you been up to this morning, Mikey? Hanging at home. Can anyone confirm this? No. You weren't hanging at Simone Clark's place around 7.30, were you? Who? Come on, Mikey, you've had dealings with her. And Lee Harris? Oh, yeah. Haven't seen her for ages. It's not the impression we got when we spoke to her after her surgery. Is she a crook? She was shot. I never did nothing like that. Why is Lee Harris scared of you? Of me? Hmm. Pathetic young addict. Scared just hearing your name. Nobody needs to be scared of me, Sergeant. Look, we have had blokes like you come up from the city, try and set up a new business. Trust me, it never lasts. Where's Lee Harris? I don't know. Ask his girlfriend. If she dies, this will be a murder charge. You are too pretty to take seriously, Kotko. Know that? We've got a warrant to search your premises. We're entitled to hold you while we continue this investigation. Kids want drugs, and they're gonna get them. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. Ma, 
Anton's place comes from Paris. Mikey's place is clean, no weapon, no drugs. Well, blokes like that know not to leave their stuff lying around. Have you spoken to the police, Mother? Sergeant? Uh, we only got an answering machine. All right, I'll see if one of the local coppers can drop by. Yeah. That was the guy from Ballistics, a lead bullet, 3840, shot from a black powder cartridge. Black powder? What's that telling us? It's a really old gun. So what's a drug dealer doing running around with a, an antique revolver? Boss, there were black specks on Simone Clark's hand. Could they have been powder burnt? There was something else too. Um, the nose of the bullet was flattened on one side. Did it hit the victim's bone? Not according to the surgeon. So it hit something else before it hit her. Been out of the ground again, PJ. There's no weapon anywhere in the yard or next door. I took it with him. He fired the shot. Come on, no detective. The black powder marks on her hand, she did right. Well, she shot herself. Yep. Someone is at the door threatening her. She pulls out the gun that she or Lee has hidden away, pulls the trigger, the gun kicks. Bullet ricochets, she goes down. Whoever she fired the gun at wrestles it out of her hand in case she fires it again, decamps in a hurry, taking the gun with them. Then calls us. No guesses as to where the antique gun came from. The Colt revolver. The weapon that tamed the West. It's a beautiful, simple piece of craftsmanship. Only five moving parts. Benny, she could have killed somebody. She nearly killed herself. I thought the barrel was plugged. Jeez, I didn't think anyone could fire that thing. Illegally, in your possession, and you didn't report it missing. Well, I'm sorry the kid got hurt, but I didn't ask her to steal it. Was it kept under lock and key? No, it was left around the place with a lot of other stuff my dad did a deal on about 50 years ago. I kept it in the desk drawer. What for? To scare off aliens? No, armed robbers. In case they tried anything. I didn't realise there was a bullet in it. One bullet is all it takes. If the barrel had been plugged, <laughs> it would have exploded in her face. Yeah. It could have been worse. All right, Benny, you'll be facing a number of charges. Obviously, the weapon will not be returned to you if and when we recover it. Found a witness who saw someone matching Mikey's description leaving Simone's flat this morning. You've got this all wrong. Come on, Mikey, you were seen. Simone's going to tell us what really happened. You don't want your bosses coming in from town to sort out your mess. You? You're not listening. I'm saying you've got this all wrong. I didn't shoot anybody. So enlighten us. Lee is in debt. Why way in? For what? Services rendered. You, you mean those little packets of white powder you've been peddling around town? No, I'm not dealing. He doesn't owe me. He owes people I work for. That's why he ran away from the city. So the people who supplied him with drugs in the city sent you down here to deal with him? Debts have to be paid. And you're the debt collector. I went around there early just to talk to him again. Oh, we know what you mean by talk. Just to talk, honest. His bitch pulled this Wild West cowboy gun out and started screaming she'd blow my head off. Did she discharge the weapon? No. I backed off. Backed off? Yeah, I left. Didn't touch him. Honest. So, you left Simone's house at about 7.30 this morning? Yep. And at that time, Lee Harris, her boyfriend, was still there? Yes. You sure about that? They were there together and she had the gun. Mikey, you stuffed up and your bosses aren't going to be happy. Now, we're going to confirm your story with Simone and Lee, and if it doesn't check out, we'll be seeing you again. Ciao for now. Right. The guys at Paran said they found Lee's mum, and as far as she knows, Lee isn't in Melbourne. So? So Lee's dad is lying to us. Not necessarily. Sarge, he said that Lee caught the 7 o'clock train to the city. Now, he was still at Simone's flat at half past. According to Mikey... And even if his story is true, John is only going on what Lee told him. Well, who did Simone fire the gun at if it wasn't Mikey? Boyfriend, maybe. And think about it, a hired thug has just come round to her place because of him. Good night. Yeah, night, Joe. We're going to be out of here pretty soon anyway. See ya. Good night. Or well, maybe Lee's dad went round there. Mm. And she was so scared of him, she thought she had to defend herself. They struggled for the gun and it went off. Who reported the gunshot? It could have been John Harris. Or Lee himself. Or a passerby. All right, so where is Lee? I don't know. Somebody ought to tell that John Harris there's more to bring up a kid than just calling yourself a father. 
You should stay away from him. Tess, it's me. I'm down at John Harris's place. Hold on a second. What's happening? Just get down here fast. Nothing, it's false alarm. Constable, you call me out in the middle of the night. Something is going on. Look, what are you, you hurt yourself? What are you doing out here anyway? I couldn't sleep. I just went for a drive. One of us or both of us are dreaming this. I don't dream. Constable, can I have a word, please? No. What is this? I wasn't dreaming either. Well, you call me in the middle of the night. You're at John Harris's workplace. You needed help. Then I get down there, you tell me it's a false alarm. Yeah, well, why would I say it's a false alarm if it wasn't? Because someone held a gun to your head. Why did you say that? What? And why did you just say that? Well, I just because I had a dream that someone held a gun to your head, all right? That's how you're dreaming about me now. Nice. I'm here to see Senior Sergeant Croydon. Yeah. This is the evidence that I've been forced to look for myself. What's this all about, Harold? The chain, Tom, from the back gate of my shop. And where exactly did you find it? My neighbour saw it, hanging from the branches in the plum tree in his backyard. Look, it's been cut. Well, so much for dreams, eh, Sarge? I knew it. Truth. I can't tell you the truth. Why? Sides, so I, I just can't. You went to John Harris's workplace. What happened there? No. Then tell me what is going on. All right. What happens when PJ and I go over there and we turn the place over ourselves? Don't do that. Then tell me what is going on. Uh, boss wants to see you, Sarge. Okay, thanks, Constable. We'll be in in a minute. Okay. Thanks. Either you tell me, or you tell the boss. Will you talk to somebody? And listen to what they have to say, not judge them as a copper? I am a copper. But you're having a kid. You of all people should be prepared to listen to what he has to say. Listen to who? Tell me, am I talking to the hooks on your shoulder, or to you? You're talking to the uniform and to me. Which way I go depends on what you have to say. She'll listen, mate. She'll give you a fair hearing. Mate? This is the guy who just held a gun to your head? I've apologised for that. It wasn't even loaded. Turns out there was only the one bullet in it anyway. You better tell me how this all happened, Mr Harris. Lee met Simone after rehab. I thought she might have been the one. I thought she might have you know, given him the strength to help himself. But they just pulled each other down. After they knocked over the jewellers, I knew I had to do something. Was it you who returned the jewellery? Yeah. I took it off Lee, called Harold and left it under his car. You see, you hoped for something. 
you keep on hoping, but then you know there's no hope and, unless you do something. Now, I had to get him away from us, or I, I went around to that dump that they live in. And Simone had the Colt revolver? Simone. Simone was strung out. She pulled it out from under a cushion on the lounge. It went off. It missed me, but ricocheted back at her. Now, I just grabbed it off and then grabbed Lee and dragged him out of there. You left Simone there with a bullet in her stomach. I called you lot. I... I know, I... I should have gone back for her, but what could I do? You could have stemmed the flow of blood. You could have made her comfortable, you could have reassured her, you could have saved her life, maybe. I had to think of my boy. Now, I've been keeping him at my office ever since. Keeping him against his will? For the time being, you bet. And you know about all this? Well, John's going to take Lee away to get him clean. Oh. Look, I'm looking after a friend's place. It's a big house, high up on a hill. There's plenty of work to do, orchard to look after, fence to mend. We can grow our own tucker. It'll be a clean start for him. You want me to turn a blind eye? It's his last hope. Evan, I have to tell the boss about this. Hey, <laughs> but what if it was your kid? The guy that you said was a villain. I was wrong. No, no, you weren't. He's covered crimes, he's left the scene of a shooting, he's imprisoned his own son. Tess? I have to tell the boss. Tell me what, Sergeant? Well, I shouldn't have listened to you. Excuse me, mate. Bloody coppers. Take a hit, boss. Yeah, right. All right, you two. Over here. It's his son, boss. He loves him. And for that, we forgive him many things, but not breaking the law. So he's spot on. We're coppers and that's it. Do you think I don't sympathise with him as much as you do? Now, all he wants to do is take him up to the farm, give him some clean, fresh air, some good food, make him work hard and beat it. Do you think we should give him that chance, Sergeant? If I took these off, yeah. So do I. But the law is the law. Son... You left her for dead. You locked me up so I couldn't get to her. You don't know anything, Dad. What do you want? Me to be like you? Make your own way down to the station? Yeah. Talk to him. We had everything but a key to the padlock, so we cut the chain. So how did you get into the safe? Harold would tell Simone to close it after she put the jewellery away at night. And Simone, she just pretended to spin the combination and the safe looked like it was shut and, and locked. Didn't Harold check it? No. Nah. Too busy checking out Simone. She used some double-sided tape to keep it shut. So you just pulled it open? Yeah. Took the jewellery, locked the safe for real and, and, and out of there. So why'd you replace the chain? Well, that, that was the only sign there'd been a robbery here. We, we were going to pay off Micah with some of the jewellery, then take off with the rest. Except Constable Jones here couldn't sleep. Well, I thought he was just some guy, you know. So I, I hung around till he left. Uh, put the new chain on and, and, and chucked the other one. And you got that from your dad's? Mm. Your dad sprang you with the jewellery, didn't he? Leaving you with nothing, so you had to do over Benny Danders. Uh, uh, just to score some stuff from a friend of Simone's. Well, you and Simone will be charged. You, do you understand that? <laughs> Sorry? Let me have a word. What's this? I'll speak to you afterwards, Constable. It's a dead in a few months. That all right with you, is it? 
As if it matters. No, it matters to your dad. So? When did you stop giving us stuff about him? I don't know. Now, in fact, when did you stop giving us stuff about yourself? You can't beat it on your own. Just remember that. You can't stop it. A difference? Maybe. Hopefully. Constable? Yeah, Sarge, look, I, I know I was way out of line. No, no, just. Listen. Bringing a child into this world is different from coping alone. You'll be right. You gotta think about someone else. Not just yourself. You gotta think about the kind of world that you're bringing them into. You said that you still wanna be my friend. Yeah. Like right through this, till the baby's born and, and after that. Well, I'm not so sure about the delivery room. Oh, <laughs> but... no, no, no. I'll let you off at the delivery room. Baby. <laughs> it, it's awesome. It's really going to happen. Yeah. You're not dreaming it, are you? No way.